Congratulations, new player! You have just completed the quest for Sestasha and unlocked the Party Finder. And you probably have no idea what that means. What you do know is your chat is now constantly being spammed with messages like this. Wanna fix that? Come along and we'll talk about Party Finder and its uses. While you're here, make sure to subscribe or check my merch below. First, let's take care of those annoying messages. You can filter them out in the chat menu, but you can also stop them completely. In the Party Finder menu, under the Party Menu button, is a small gear icon in the top right. You can filter out duties you have no access to, blacklisted player parties, and turn off those damn notifications. As a newer player, turning off locked duties will leave your window looking pretty empty since there's a lot of content to play, but you can still get your own uses out of it. Let's go over every element. There's a lot of buttons, but they mostly will all become recognizable to you in time. Next to the gear, we have these three buttons. The first is for adjusting criteria for what parties you want to find if the other tabs aren't specific enough. Want to only see about a specific duty? You can filter out every duty except for that one. The objective dropdown is for listing your specific purpose. Looking to clear a fight? Looking to farm loot? Or maybe you're learning the fight still. Might be better to leave at none though, since people can put the wrong tags on specific party types. We also have these two buttons on the right, Beginner's Welcome and Recordable. One is obvious, the other I'll mention again in a bit. Roles is for looking for only parties that have your specific role in mind. Are you a healer main and only have healers geared, or even a single healer job only? Search for only parties looking for healers still. Search area. Toggle on or off world. Don't ever use this basically. World-based content will always have those specific parties locked to the world anyway. Limiting a dungeon run or something like that to only players on your world is pointless. Conditions you can add multiple of. Duty complete requires a player to have cleared a duty before to join the party. This is more for farm parties to ensure people know a fight to actually do said farming. Complete with weekly reward unclaimed is only for the high-end players. Current tier Savage raids have a one clear a week loot pool. Just by having cleared players in your party, the group will get less loot. So uncleared players are required for full rewards. Average item level puts a minimum gear requirement on players joining. As far as a search criteria, I don't recommend this much. On average, a good player will probably have higher gear, but that's not an inherent measure of skill either. Duty Finder settings is the Duty Finder menu's gear button. Unrestricted Party removes all requirements and Level Sync is turned off. Certain rewards are also removed, but the important rewards from opening chests at the end of duties will still give items. This is a setting people use to make farming older content far easier, since they're level 90 or such, doing level 50 content with level 90 power. Minimum IL is minimum item level, or your gear level. Most duties have a minimum gear level expected of the player. Minimum IL will force all players to have the stats of someone at that minimum gear level. For challenge runs, similar for Silence Echo. Old difficult duties would give Echo buffs to getting far enough into it, and in unsynced cases, just from unsyncing. Silence Echo removes these buffs and prevents them from appearing no matter how close you get to clearing a fight. Again, for challenge runs and some achievements. Loot rolls are pretty simple. Greed only turns off the ability to roll need on an item. Need supersedes greed, meaning if anyone needs, nobody who rolls greed can even attempt to get the item. Need rolls are only available if the job you currently are on can use it anyway. A reason to put this on would be to farm glamour items from an old raid, but want to give everyone a fair chance at each. It's highly specific though. Lootmaster puts the onus on the party leader. The party leader gets to decide how all loot works out, whether or not people can roll for it, or if a specific person is only allowed to have it. On random farm parties, this is a red flag to look out for. Let's farm this fight, and then it's Lootmaster? Seems like the leader is going to steal all the loot and run away. Usually for grabbing the special mounts, extreme level fights drop, but in cases of like, Hey, we need a weapon for our group's black mage to swap the summoner, the rest of the loot is free roll. Loot Master will guarantee that one item goes to who needs it. People tend to also offer gil for help, which from stories I hear counts as a contract and is bannable if they go back on their word. Finally, we have language. Since data centers are pretty separate, language is barely if ever an issue. 
There seems to be a bunch of English players on Japanese servers, and a divide between the player bases exists, so locking out English players might be a thing you see. This could also be something European players go through a lot more, locking out specific language players. Normally though, this is likely not something you need to worry about either. That covers all those options for searching, but what about if your friend has a party up? The next button will allow you to search for a player name. Any players with that name will be found. It beats having to sort through a whole lot of parties, especially during peak hours where there's a lot of parties running. Finally, there's the display mode button. This just changes how the listings look. The second option is much more compact and has more listings fit, but the description of the party, the important part, is put last and is cut off. Back to the gear icon, we have two other buttons like it. One changes the order from descending to ascending. Unless you know the type of party you are looking for is toward the bottom and you want to see it easier, well, you could just use the other sorting method instead anyway. The other button is more filtering. Without searching specifically, you can turn off certain party types. We've gone over all of these except for playstyle. Beginners is obvious still, but what is recordable? The Duty Recorder is a very useful but very forgotten system at level cap. It allows for you to record a fight to look over later. The main issue is that only like three duties are ever recordable at any time and an update to the game will erase your recordings. Also, those duties might not even be the relevant duties you need. From there, we have a whole lot of buttons. I'll be taking these from left to right. The number is the number of parties that fall under this specific duty type. All is obviously all parties currently listed. Duty Roulette is for the Duty Roulettes, a pool of duties you could do once a day for big reward bonuses. The pool increases in size as more duties unlock. Dungeons, obviously any dungeon. Guild Hests, if you didn't unlock these, maybe go back and pick up every blue quest you passed by, but this is where they go. Trials, where all the dedicated boss fight duties go. This includes the high and extreme trials once they are no longer the current one. Raids, where all 8 player and all 24 player alliance raids go. This includes the high end difficulty raids once they are no longer the current tier. High end duty, this is where current extreme trials, current savage raids, unreal trials, and all ultimate level raids go. PvP, it's for PvP. Quest battles. This is referring to quests, mostly side quests, that include killing enemies, not the actual solo duties that come into play. This is a party type that can only be used with the world-only recruitment setting on. Fates. Also limited to the world. These are the tasks that appear on every overworld area. Usually you will see players farming specific areas in Shadowbringers and beyond, or doing special rare fates that are hard to spawn or have long respawn times. Treasure Hunt. This is also limited to the world. By gathering them or buying from the market, players can open treasure maps. To obtain the contents, you must kill monsters spawned by the chest. There are often special dungeons spawned by specific map types in Heavensward and beyond. The Hunt. Limited to the world, hunts include three tiers, B, A, and S ranks. B ranks are meant to be soloed and are passive. A ranks expect at least one party to take down. Players have taken to doing hunt trains to ease the difficulty of killing hunts and giving many rewards. S ranks expect large groups of players. If you see a hunt party up, there may be a hunt train or an S rank spawn somewhere. Gathering forays. The diadem is Heavensward content that doesn't need a party and I don't think is even helped by being in one. Ocean fishing is unlocked by any level 10 fisher who does their class quests. It's the best place to level a fisher and has many of its own rewards, tasks, and even special challenges for achievements. Deep Dungeons, Palace of the Dead, Heaven on High, and Eureka Orthos. Special 4 player dungeons with roguelike elements, play very differently to normal content and are big commitments to get to the end. There is a casual player set of floors to start, so all players can enjoy this content. 10 sets of floors at a time, a party wipe fails the duty. If your party wipes on the way to the final floor beyond the casual floors, you will have to start over from floor 1, or whatever checkpoint floors may exist. Field Operations, the Forbidden Land and Bosia Open Duty Content Types. To boil it down to the simplest form, it's fate farming and special duties, but there are more details and more duties to it than just these. The Forbidden Land is Stormblood and Bosia is Shadowbringers. V and C Dungeon Finder. 
Variant and Criterion Dungeons are special dungeons with multiple pathways and extreme to savage level dungeons respectively. At the time of making this, there is only one dungeon at level 90, the Soren Subterrain, but it is likely more will be added with time. Other. Any party finder that does not fit under any of these types. This can be filled with memes, RP venue spam, or some genuine requests and offers. Those are all the specific duty filters you can go through. Now at the top we have Data Center, World, and Private. Data Center will include any parties meant for only the world you are currently on, but World will filter out any and all parties that can be done across multiple servers. Given there's very little reason to ever make a party that can be cross-server be world only, this is just an additional button for checking for hunts basically. Private is for all parties with a password. If your friend has a private party up for you, you'll probably just search for their name, especially if you're into raiding now. Typical raid hours, there can be dozens of parties up, and searching for their name can be easier. But if there's one or two, well there you go. On the very rare case, Someone might put up a party for, guess the password and get a reward. Alright, we've gone over everything, so let's make a party. None will default you to the other tab, while all the other duty types will filter you into that type. You'll also have to pick a specific duty. Pick your objective, requirements, etc. we all talked about. Add a comment if you want to describe your goals or strategies. I highly recommend it. The role section is for fine-tuning what jobs you want for a party. The typical party is 2 tanks, 2 healers, 4 DPS, but there are reasons to limit it to different compositions like 6 DPS. If you don't care what people are playing, like if you're doing hunts, just hit the remove restrictions option to let everyone in. Unselected classes will block all classes from joining, which isn't usually required but is otherwise a good feature. And one player per job. In high-end content, this matters a lot. Limit break generation is cut down if you have more than one player on a single job, so diversifying your jobs is very much important in Savage and Ultimate. Extreme, not usually as much. Everything else, we've gone over. Now, let's talk about when you would want to Party Finder. Well, any content the Duty Finder seems to not be working for. If you are struggling to get people, don't be afraid to check the Party Finder or make your own. As a new player though, let me tell you this. Odin, Minstrel's Ballad, and Extreme Duties are all things you should do via Party Finder. These are Extreme Duties by different names. Doing Extreme Level Duty Finders are going to be a mistake for a variety of reasons. These are very difficult fights, far beyond anything you will experience outside of it. Often too difficult to be taught and clear in an hour. Especially when you consider you might also get players who aren't going to try fellow sprouts who expect it to fall with no work. Further, extremes are not in the roulette system. They are only in Menta Roulette, which includes all duties in the game except for savage or harder content. That's a lot of duties, and even the best mentors can't be expected to memorize the several hundred fights possible. And even if they do know how to fight it, execution is still a thing. And whether or not they can teach you in time is another. And finally, are you there for the clear or the challenge? If you're only there to clear, unsynced help from a level 90 is the ideal way to do it. For the challenge, well there's discords for that, where you can get a full party of people willing to learn the fight properly. Just make sure you are also willing to learn. Other content you may run into that is something you will need to party finder is the Binding Coils of Bahamut. That isn't even in Menta Roulette because it is a savage level raid. It doesn't say it is savage because it predates the difficulty's creation, but it counts as savage. All the more reason to get a discord for this kind of thing if you insist on doing it normally. So as I said, any harder content that has queue times even longer than your normal experience, go to party finder for it. Can't make a party because you're on the free trial? That's what the Novice Network is for. Now for some red flags to talk about with looking at Party Finder. Lootmaster is the obvious one. Read the fine print and make sure they're offering a reward. Again, this is reportable if they don't hold up their end of the bargain as some people tell me. Another version of this that I don't think is reportable is duties listed as mount farms where join order is the order you get the mount. Typically, the party leader will get the mount then just disband the party. No description at all can also be a red flag. It's a clear party, but they aren't listing any strategies or such. They probably expect a carry. 
If you are knowledgeable about a specific fight and a party finder description doesn't make sense, that might also be cause for concern. Oh, and obviously, putting a PF up for the wrong duty. Though, that one sounds obvious. On that note, please make sure you are joining the correct parties too. If you need to learn a fight, join a learning party. Joining a clear party with no idea and no practice is a recipe for disaster, and get blacklisted by seven other people. Make sure a party is the right one before joining. And if you're making the party, make sure all of your settings are correct. List if it is a learning party, clear party, farm party, or whatever it is. Make sure in the higher tier content you have strats listed so players know what to expect. Eventually, people start to gravitate to specific sets of strats, even if there are better options. Be ready to learn those too. Which gets us into the final issue with Party Finder, Word Soup. Descriptions for parties are limited, and in some cases, the number of strategies needed are too many to fit. So you might get stuff like LP, Loop, and Panto, TM, RH, Conga Line, Synergy, BPOG, GPOG for right if remote. And that's only two phases of mechanics. This makes 100% sense to me because I know the fight. Getting into something for learning? Well, can be a bit much even when strategies are listed. A lot of what you come into contact with will be learnt with further exposure. Like in that description I just showed, LP is Light Party, which is one tank, one healer, two DPS. Light Party is a game term, not something Clay is made up, by the way. LC, though, is Limit Cut. That's a mechanic from two specific fights in the whole entire game. However, any and all mechanics similar to Limit Cut get called Limit Cut now. That's not the name of the mechanic, but hey, it could be worse. They could be calling a donut-shaped AoE Dynamo. Wait, you're telling me there's people who do that? Thank you for watching this mini tutorial on the Party Finder. Feel free to leave some tips below in the comments for how to handle Party Finder if I did not mention them here. Please rate, comment, subscribe, check out any merch, or check out my socials or Twitch. Take care in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anna Nidhogs lay waste to your enemies. Extra thanks to my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks to... Ayman al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Ethan Olson, Ethan W, Fraser97, James Hall, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thanks for watching, see you in Party Finder maybe.